The NFL Draft is done and over, and I am going to be breaking down each and every team and grading out their draft. So check back every day because one team I will do every single day, and I'll have it up here on YouTube for you to watch. We'll go over every prospect that they drafted as well as some key undrafted free agents that they may bring in. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I'll be sure to address them for you. Also, just be aware of my draft grades. No one fails the draft, especially right after it. Even no one in this draft is going to get a D or an F from me because they, everyone had a talent. Everyone did something. So if you think the grades are a little bit high, that's just me not going to too much extremes. And maybe in three or four years, when we look back on this draft, then we can see who really succeeded and who really failed. So sit back, relax, enjoy me as I break down every single team this year. Draft expert Shane Hallam shows off his knowledge. Writing mock drafts, prospects from the best college. Breaking down tape, he might develop a man crush. Tearing up guys, taking questions in a rush. Comparisons, learning lessons. Shane saves the day, oy vey. Hulk or banner, doesn't matter. Listen, cause here's who can play. Hey everyone, today we're going to keep going with the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons, I thought, are a very intriguing draft to me in the first. They took Sean Weatherspoon, linebacker out of Missouri. This is someone I knew they were targeting. They really wanted to upgrade the linebacking core of their defense. The outside linebackers were weak. They have Curtis Lofton in the middle who looks good. So I think Sean Weatherspoon, a leader, a guy that can come in, be very vocal, and I really like that pick for them in the first round. In the third, they got Corey Peters, defensive tackle. I thought this was a slight reach. They just got Pare Jerry last year. He got injured before the season, really didn't play, so he'll also be coming back as kind of a first round pick again. Corey Peters, I really think he's just more of a rotational guy. They wanted some depth there, it seems, with Babineau and with Pare Jerry. So I just don't know if at the third round you can really take a guy like this just for depth or for maybe coming a couple downs within a game. So I, I like Corey Peters. I think he's a solid player, high motor guy. He's going to work hard. He can heat up a block. He can make a tackle pretty well. But I just really want to see what he's going to do on this team and how they're going to use him. Also in the third, they got Mike Johnson, offensive guard from Alabama. Really like this pick. I'm a big fan of Mike Johnson. I think he's a big reason that Alabama won the national championship, that Mark Ingram won the Heisman this year. You watch him. He always pushes his guy back. You know, he's not overly powerful. He's not overly quick, but he always seems to get his block on, and he doesn't let his guy go. You know, he doesn't let people get past him, and he clears holes for running back. So I like Mike Johnson. I think he's someone that can start sooner rather than later for the Falcons. In the fourth, they got Joe Hawley, uh, center at UNLV. Someone they're probably going to develop into their starting center in a year or two. I'm not a huge fan of his. I wasn't able to watch quite as much tape of UNLV play as I wanted to, but from everything I've, I've seen and what I've read, he's not overly powerful. He's not going to get a good leverage on his defensive tackle that he's facing. So I want to see how he develops. He is good at snapping the ball. He's going to work well. He does well as a leader on the offensive line. And I think that's what Atlanta was looking for. In the fifth, they got Dominic Franks, corner out of Oklahoma. Really big fan of Dominic Franks. He's not going to wow you with his speed. He's not going to wow you using his hands or making big plays. But he's a very good cover corner. He's physical with wide receivers. He's not afraid. He doesn't back down. And I think he's just going to be a great nickel corner. They got down to Robinson. I think they can plug Dominic Franks into the nickel or dime as a rookie. I think he'll be successful. If injuries happen, he's a guy that I like. Similar to Gerard Powers last year at Auburn for the Colts that stepped up. I think this is a guy in Dominic Franks that may step up and surprise some people. In the fifth, they also got Kerry Meyer, wide receiver out of Kansas. I like Kerry Meyer, a former quarterback for Kansas. He's someone that shows the ability to go up and get the ball at its highest point. Big hands. He's very good at catching the ball, securing it. Not going to blaze you, but he's going to be a good slot wide receiver in the NFL. I think he's just going to develop into that. So when the time comes for Jenkins to step down, Harry Douglas take his place, I think Kerry Meyer is someone that can move into that slot for the Falcons. So I really like that pick. Then in the sixth, they got uh, Shan Schillinger, who's a safety out of Montana. 
This guy's more of a special teams player, very productive at Montana, and it seems to be a connection that the Atlanta Falcons have. So they got Croy Bierman a couple years ago out of the same school. So I think Shan Schillinger is someone that's probably going to come in, play special teams, be a safety reserve as a worst case if they need him, and try to be more of a developmental guy. Overall, for the Falcons, I give him an A-. I think they made some great late-round picks. Dominic Franks, Kerry Meyer. I, think the, I like the Mike Johnson pick and the Sean Weatherspoon pick. Question the Corey Peters pick a little bit, but I just really want to see how they use him and what role he's going to play on that defense. So as a whole, I like this draft. I don't overly love it, though a lot of these NFC drafts were very good, so it's tough to compare. In terms of undrafted free agents, one guy caught my eye, Colin Peak, tight end Alabama. Very good blocker. That's usually his forte, but he also can catch the ball a little bit. So I, I think he's someone that can make the team was looking for a replacement for Tony Gonzalez in the future. Colin Peak could be that guy. So I'd like to see him end up on the practice squad and stay on the team and see what he does. So there you go. That's the Atlanta Falcons, and stay tuned for tomorrow when we have another NFC team.